hands. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord, travelers by land, by sea, and by air, for the sick and the suffering, for captives and their salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may be delivered from all affliction, wrath, danger, and necessity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Let us commend ourselves and each other and all our life unto Christ our God.
Pastor Waller. Lips of the 
righteous, no one is acceptable to the mouth of the wicked or his perverse. Dishonest scales are an abomination to the Lord, but a just wages is to life. When pride comes, they put shame in front of the humble and wisdom. The integrity of the upright will guide them, but the perversity of the unfaithful will destroy them. Riches do not profit in the aircraft, but if righteousness delivers from death. The righteousness of the blameless and direct is very right, but the wicked will fall by his own wickedness. The righteousness of the upright will deliver them, but the unfaithful will be caught by their loss. When a wicked man dies, his expectation will perish, and the hope of the unjust perishes. The righteous is delivered from trouble, and it comes to the wicked instead. The hypocrite with his mouth destroys his neighbor, but through knowledge the righteous will be delivered. When it goes well with the righteous, the sin rejoices, and when the wicked perish, there is tribulation. By the blessing of the upright, the city is exalted, his enemy is overthrown by the mouth of the wicked. He who is devoid of wisdom despises his neighbor, but a man of understanding holds his peace. Wisdom! The Greeks know wisdom, Solomon, let us attend. But the righteous man, though he die early, will be at rest. For an old age is not honored for the length of time, nor measured by number of years. But understanding is great here for men, and a blameless life is ripe old age. There was one who pleased God and was loved by him. He was caught up lest evil change his understanding or foul deceive his soul. For the fascination of awakeness are cursed what is good, and will be desired for his perversity and his mind. But being perfected in his short time, fulfilled long years. For his soul was pleasing to God, therefore he took, took him quickly in the midst of wickedness. Yet the people saw and did not understand, nor take such a thing to heart, that God's grace and mercy, or what does he lack, as he watches over his holy ones? Let us say with all our soul and with all our mind, let us say.
kingdom, the power, and the glory of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. of Nicholas the Wonder Worker, Archbishop of Myra in Lycia. He figures very prominently within the Christian consciousness 
throughout the entire world. He is truly one of those universal saints of the universal church. Nicholas was born in Mira of Lycia, which is basically modern-day Turkey. His parents, Theophanes and Nona, raised him in godliness, and he desired to live that life, going to be with one of his uncles, who is also named Nicholas in Patara. He was tonsured a monk and wanted to live a life of asceticism. He had this dream of what his life was going to be like as a Christian. It was going to be quiet and easy in the sense that he wasn't going to mingle himself in the affairs of the world. But God came to him and told him that if he wants to be saved, he'd need to work among the people. He was aptly named Nicolaios, which means the victory of the people. And so he went and ministered, was eventually consecrated a bishop, served his people as far as we know with great love and zeal. There's many stories about his generosity, a story about his generosity that will probably inspire some of us to put our shoes out tomorrow morning. And yet he was also called to a difficult labor. He was called to be present at the First Ecumenical Council in the year 325, where he famously had a conflict with that arch-heretic Arius. And I know this is hard to believe, but he lost his cool. And he did something that wasn't right. We don't want to say, I can deck somebody at a parish <coughs> meeting because Nicholas did it. <laughs> However, he was overcome and he was stripped of his dignity, but ultimately restored by another vision from the Lord and the Mother of God. Sometimes in the icon, you'll see an image of Christ with the gospel and the Mother of God with the Omophorium, reinvesting him in his Episcopal dignity, which he was restored to. He sets for us uh, an example of what it looks like to be a Christian, to be one who is willing to seek first God's will before his own or our own. That's hard. It's really difficult. <clears throat> he also sets for us an example of, of charity and intercession for other people, to care about, not to um, be a busybody, because there's a difference, there's difference between caring about other people's lives and inserting ourselves into other people's lives. There's not enough time tonight to go between those distinctions, but if you're ever in doubt, ask someone who trusts, you trust and loves, and you say, am I doing the right thing here? They may tell you, I think you've kind of stepped in a little bit, step back. But Nicholas was one who knew how to intercede and to help people. We even heard in one of the hymns that he confronted the king and says, if you don't do this thing, I'll intercede against you. I mean, have, did you see that? That was tough. So there's something about the life of this, this saintly bishop who we love and we honor and adore. He wasn't some fat elf from the North Pole. <laughs> right? Ho, ho, ho. Jolly Saint Nick. But rather a Christian who was convicted, who was passionate about his faith yet humble, humble enough to be led about by God and wherever God chose to take him. He sets for us a great example. That's why we honor St. Nicholas. That's why as you come forward tonight to receive some of the manna which 
pours forth from the relics of Saint Nicholas, and you'll be anointed with it tonight. And as you come forward and venerate a portion of this relic that was brought to us by our friend Ben Thuma tonight, for our veneration and for our, our the lifting up of our, of our minds and our hearts as we celebrate Nicholas, to have a, a portion of his sacred body present with us here in the church so we can be blessed by it. Thank you. And another gift from one of our parishioners, these icon cards of St. Nicholas that you can take and bring to your home. Each of them have been anointed. Actually, I, I'll tell you my trick. I went along the spine and anointed all of these with some of the manna. I like to do things efficiently. <laughs> so... You can take those icons home with you and keep it in your icon corner as a, as a blessing. And there's so many of them. If you have some people that you want to bless with these icons, I don't think we're going to run out tonight. Unless someone like takes an entire stack, okay? So take enough so that you can bring them and bless other people with these, with these icons and with that blessing from St. Nicholas. So others can be inspired by his life of generosity and love and conviction. A conviction of that life that is, that is an encounter, an encounter day by day, week by week, month by month, year by year, an encounter with the living God, Jesus Christ. One last thing that I want to note. Several weeks ago, when we celebrated the feast of the entry of the Mother of God into the temple, I mentioned that the Christmas hymns began to be entered into our liturgical life. It's actually during the service of Matins. It's the, uh, the end of the canons. I'm gonna get, I don't wanna get too technical, but it's in the Matin service. And we don't typically celebrate the Matin service in our church. But this is the first time in our hearing during the regular services, the Vesper service, that we begin to hear a Christmas hymn. The now and ever verse at the Lord I call, and the now and ever verse at the Apostica. Another unfolding and sort of a deepening of our Advent journey through the intercessions of St. Nicholas. As I mentioned today, that doesn't mean that we need to scurry around, but rather we need to slow down, be intentional, Peace, as the scriptures tell us, is not something that's passive. And many of you have heard this in confession, and I say this to myself almost every day. It's from the Psalms. We need to seek peace and pursue it. It's not a passive thing, but something that's active. So through the prayers of St. Nicholas, may we seek that peace, that peace who is, which is not a thing or a a feeling, but a person, Jesus Christ our Lord, to the glory of the kingdom of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory to you,
Nicholas created God for us. Saint Nicholas created God for us. Saint Nicholas created God for us. Nicholas receive and give help in time.